Today I'm going to show you how to make a stunning magazine cover in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today's episode is all about creating a stunning magazine cover in Photoshop. We're going to be going over some cool tools. We're going to be using things like the pen tool, the type tool. I'm going to show you how to make selections. We're going to be using like gradients and we're going to be using layer masks and all kinds of cool blending modes. Really cool episode. And it was brought to you by our friend Nefer Romero, who's one of the people who watches Flurn. And he suggested, he said, hey, I want to learn how to make a magazine cover in Photoshop, specifically the magazine. So if you guys have ideas for episodes, that's how we get these episodes. So just leave them in a comment down below and your idea could become the next Flurn episode. All right, let's get into it. The image we're using today is from Photolia.com. It's an awesome stock website and we've been using their images a ton lately because they're great. And this is an image that it's pretty much straight from Photolia and it's gonna work great for a magazine cover. We're gonna talk about some of the things you guys might wanna think about if you're gonna be creating your own magazine cover. And then we've got a reference. This is Gwen Stefani on a real V magazine. And then I've got an ISBN number here. I just pulled that off Google. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull all these things together so we can go ahead and start our image. So using our move tool, I'm gonna hold the shift key and click and drag from one image over to another. Just shift, click and drag from one to another. And there we go. We can see there's our image. And then this ISBN, we're gonna do the same. All right, let's go ahead and minimize that. And I'm gonna full screen by hitting F so we can actually see what we're doing. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna actually use the same dimensions and I wanna use the same V that we're actually using for the V magazine. So here, I'm gonna lower the opacity of this layer. There we go. Let's just zoom out there. I'm gonna hit Command T and we can scale this up. There we go. So it's pretty much the exact same size. So here I can actually just basically just take this V. It's a really simple logo to trace. So we're gonna use that using the pen tool and I can take that and create the V for the image. Now, let's go ahead and look raise our opacity and as I use the pen tool I'm going to explain kind of some of the things to look for in a magazine cover. So what basically we want to do is we're going to grab the pen tool. So P for the pen tool and we're going to use this a couple times. The pen tool can be used for creating great curves in an image and it can also be used for creating straight lines and this is what we're going to do. We're going to start off by creating a couple straight lines and the pen tool is so great because it creates very accurate lines. You can see zooming in here how, because we scaled this up, you can see the quality is not that great, but whenever you use a pen tool, you're gonna have really, really good quality to your lines. All right, so I'm just gonna click on each one of these corners here, and starting up there, we're gonna go right down here, and we're basically just gonna make a V. There we go, and I'm just, I'm doing nothing but clicking on these corners. There we go, we'll put another one right there. Come on down here to this point, all right, and then we're gonna go right up here and finish off. You'll see a little O next to the cursor to finish off. So we're gonna click there and that's gonna finish off our pen path. So now that we have that path, you can kind of see it. It's gonna show up over here in your path dialog. So let's click on our path. You can see it's called work path right, work path right now. Let's just call this V and hit okay. Okay, so now we've got our V. We, we really don't need this image anymore. It's pretty much at this point just gonna be like a reference. So let's go ahead and see what can, what can we can do with the V. So I'm gonna go back to my paths. We've still got the V path. And here's the thing to keep in mind. Your, your paths are gonna be totally separate from your layers and selections and things like that. So you can create a path on one layer and then turn that layer off and you'll still have access to that path because it's in a to totally different place. So here's our paths, here's our layers. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold Command or Control and click here on the thumbnail for my v, v path. And you can see it's just gonna turn it into a selection. So a great way to use paths is go ahead and make those paths by clicking and dragging and then just command click on the thumbnail and that's gonna turn them into a selection. All right, now that we have our selection, let's just go ahead and create a new layer, a new layer and then group that with itself and we're just gonna double click here and we're gonna call that V. So everything in here, that's going to be our V. All right, first thing I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and fill this with a color and I'm gonna start with this color that's actually in the dress. So Grab a, hit the brush tool, B for the brush tool, hold Alt or Option, which will bring up our colors picker, and then still holding Alt or Option, just hit Delete. And that's gonna fill whatever you have selected. So in this case, we had just that area selected, what we did with our pen tool, and it filled that with our color. So there we go, Command D, 
and we deselect. So if that's as complex as you want to go, cool. You've already got this. But we're going to go a little bit more advanced. I want to do some cooler things with this V. We're going to make sure it blends in with our subject really, really well. So to do so, I'm actually going to make three different versions of it. So I'm going to hit Command J a couple of times so we have three different versions of this V. All right, let's go ahead and make two of those invisible. Now, our first one here, I'm going to change this from a normal. This is the time when you want to play around with like blending mode. So going to like a lightened blending mode or a soft light blending mode, you can see there's some really, really cool stuff. And I happen to like this exclusion blending mode. I think that looks really, really cool on the image. And most of the time in Photoshop, you don't get to use things like exclusion. Like if you're doing like a regular you know, portrait image or something, exclusion has no place. But when you're creating a cool magazine ad or something like this, this is when you get to use things like exclusion. So I, I jump all over it. I'm like, yes, I get to use a weird blending mode. Let's do it. OK, now I like what's going on here over top of my subject, but I don't like this in the background. It's just it's getting like very messy here, and it's just kind of too much, to be honest. So what I want to do is I want to figure out a way to kind of cut her out from the background or like basically cut out away from the V so I can get I can make my selections a little bit better, and it's going to just show what I want in the background. So to do that, I'm going to use the pen tool again. Let's go ahead and zoom in here, and I'm going to create two different pen paths with this. So I'm going to go to my paths. We're going to click on the new. There we go. Let's just name that body. OK, and we'll hit P, and let's just go ahead and trace this line here. So we're going to trace a pen path that's just going to be for her body. There we go. And I'm just clicking and dragging. Super easy to use this pen tool. Again, just click and drag wherever you want these lines to be. And it'll create the curves for you. All right, there we go. And hold down Control or Command if you need to move those at any time. All right, so this is her body selected. There we go. We're going to go down and close that out by going back to the original. There we go. And then let's create a new one. And we're just going to double click on this. And we're going to call that ear. You'll see this in magazines all the time, how they have like the, the main logo or something like that, except the subject like stands in front of the logo. This is exactly how you do it. You just create a really nice pen path, and then it looks like you know the, the logo is going to be interrupted by, by the subject. So you can use any selection tool that you want for this. I, pre I prefer the pen tool because it's a really accurate way of making selections. But if you guys, you know, if you like other selection tools like the magnetic lasso tool, or if you want to just freehand this with like a magic wand tool, not magic wand tool rather, but a, um, a lasso tool, be my guest. You can use whatever you want. I just prefer the pen tool. There we go. All right, and we're going to come right up around over her hair too. There we go, and we're going to go ahead and close that out. So back to my original one, and there's our ear selection. So we've got one for the body and one for the ear. So now that we have a couple, we have all of our selections, all the hard parts done, I promise. We have all the selections. What we're going to do is this layer, I would just want this to be a different color. Let's just say this one, I actually want this to be the green color. So I'm going to use my brush tool, hold Alt or Option. OK, we're going to sample that. And I'm going to click Make This Visible. All right, And then I'm just going to lock the transparency on this layer, which just it prevents me from filling in anything else except for what already has pixels on it. OK, in this case, it's the V. So hit this Lock Transparency, and then Alt or Option Delete will fill with your foreground color. So I picked a new foreground color. I locked the transparency. And then I went ahead and filled it with that color. All right, now this V, I only want to be visible on the background. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to my paths. I'm going to hold down Command and click on my body. And then I'm going to hold the Shift and still Command at the same time and click on my ear. And then we're going to, on the same layer, we're just going to load that as a layer mask. All right, now it's inverted of what we want, right? Because it's only visible right now. You can see it's only visible on her body. So click on your layer mask and just hit Command I. There we go. It's behind the body, and it's behind the ear. And that's why the pen tool is so great. So you got those selections. You can keep playing with them. OK, now this guy, this is really cool on her body, right? I like this effect a lot. But over top of her ear, it's not really helping. So we're going to go back to Pass. We're going to hold down Control or Command and click on the ear. There we go. And then I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. And that's going to make a layer mask. So it's not visible where her ear is now. Okay. Now we're going to do basically the same thing we just did before, where I've got this other layer. Okay, 
what I want to do with this one, I'm going to hold down the lock transparency and we're going to hit shift to delete and I'm going to fill this now with black. We're going to hit OK. So I'm going to create a little bit of shadow. So we're going to use our move tool and I'm just going to move this to the right, just like that. But you can see it's just, it's in front of everything, right? So I still need a way, I need to put it behind the other layers and I still need to cut it out the same way the other layers are cut out too. So let's click and drag this down beneath the other two layers. So that's going to put it down here. But I still, I don't want this layer to be visible where her ear is or where her body is, right? Thank goodness we made our path. So I'm going to hold down command, click on the body and shift and command and click on the ear. So you can see these pen paths are totally separate from layers. If you make the paths, you can continue to use them over and over again on your layers. All right, let's go ahead and click on that. And then there we go. Now you can see that this is only visible in the background, which is super cool. And if I decide to, I can unlink. You can see by default, you'll have a layer and a layer mask. They come linked by default. But if I want to unlink them, I can click on just my layer. And with my move tool now, I can move this around and it's not going to show up where my body is. Really, really cool. So it's just a good way to get a little bit more, a little bit more kind of just cool. It, it started off simple, right? It started off basically something like that. And now we're adding some depth work. It's going over the body and then a little bit more. And I want to do one more bit of depth and then we're going to be done with a beat. So <laughs> I like what we're do doing here, but I want to bring this pink back. So what we're going to do, I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to hit B for the brush tool hold Alt or Option, and we're going to sample this pink again. And then with our gradient tool, we're going to go with a linear gradient in the foreground to transparent. I'm just going to click and drag. Oop, let me hit Escape. Let's zoom out so we can see this. All right, I'm going to click up here and drag down. So it's going to do something like that. There we go. Now, I only want this to be visible where this V is. And the quickest way to do that is to just use a clipping mask. And this layer, the gradient layer, will only be visible where the V is. So to do that, hold Option and command and hit G or right click and go to create clipping mask. There we go. And I can just stretch that down a little bit more. All right. That's really, really cool. So we now have this V that's like super intense, right? We've got a background that only shows up behind our subject. Then we've got the pink that kind of goes over top of everything for the body. Then we've got the green over top of that and then more pink on top of that. So a lot of control and you guys can see using the pen tool in combination with our layer masks and some blending modes, you can do some great, great stuff with your images. And I, I would love to see this on magazine shelves. So we're done with the V. Let's go ahead and add some type to the image to finish it off and make it look like a magazine cover. For our type, we're going to create a new layer and I'm going to hit command G to group that with itself. We'll just double click on here and call it type. And obviously this is not a real magazine cover, right? So whatever I write here just doesn't it won't wind up making any sense at all. Um, <laughs> don't worry about that. It doesn't need to make any sense. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, let's hit caps lock here. I'm going to type in pink, and then we're going to scale this up. So I'm going to hit A for my, um, for my character here. Let's go ahead and scale this up quite a bit now. There we go. That looks really good. So I'm going to hit pink, and then I'm actually going to duplicate this a couple times. Sometimes you can, you know, you can hit enter and it'll go to the next line and things like that. But I actually prefer, if I'm doing multiple lines in Photoshop, usually I prefer to just duplicate my type and that I find it makes it a little bit easier to kind of just control where, where everything goes. So I'm going to hit command J and I'm going to type is the, we're going to hit command J to duplicate that again. And I'm going to type in new and then I'm going to duplicate my pink layer. So we've got pink is the new pink is <laughs> basically what we've got going on here. And that doesn't make any sense, but I'm okay with that. So is the and new, I'm going to have those both be white. So I've clicked on both of those and selected white there. All right. Is the, and I'm going to hit command T to kind of shrink that down a little bit. New is going to be shrink down as well. And that's going to be, I want that to be about the same width. Let's say command plus a couple of times. I want this to be about the same width as is the, there we go. So I can just kind of put it right above there and see how that, there we go. See how that scales. Very cool. Pink is the new pink. So we'll just put that right about there. And then our pink copy is going to go right about there. All right. So that looks pretty good, but this is, I think something magazine editors have to struggle with all the time. 
they're like, okay, this is kind of cool, but I still can't, I can't really see the pink. The is the does stand out, which is decent. I can't see the pink and maybe it's not right. So you know what? I want to make both of the pinks. Here we go. A little bit larger. So I'm going to hit command T. We're going to make those a little bit larger. And I'm also trying to figure out, like, let's figure out how to align these. So I need to figure out how do I get my pink to actually stand out so I can read a little bit better. A great way to do this is using layer effects. So to do that, I'm going to double click here on our pink copy. Let's just go right over here and I'm going to put a stroke on here, which is going to give it an outline of a color. So we're going to go right over here down to stroke. I'm trying to fit everything. You can see it's got a black line around it. We're going to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm just going to make this white so it fits with the rest of the image. There we go. Pink is the new pink. We're going to hit OK. And then I don't have to just try to replicate that on the other pink. I can actually hold Alt or Option and click on the FX and go from one layer down to another. And it's going to copy it automatically for me. Very cool. Now let's go ahead and align these just so everything's nice and like in one line. I'm going to hit Shift and click on all of those type layers. And then using my Move tool, hit V for the Move tool, I can click right here. And that's going to align them all vertically, which is exactly what I need. All right, let's bring that down there. That looks pretty good. Now, if I group is the and new, command G for those, and then shift click all those, I can use this alignment tool, which is going to center it correctly. So like you can see, if I move pink up here, let's shift click all those and click over here, it's going to stick it in the middle, right? If I move this way up here and shift click all those, it's going to stick that in the middle. And because this is a group, it's going to know, it's going to know I should keep is and the together. All right, let's click over there, bring pink down a little bit more, shift click those, there we go. So we've got pink is the new pink. I just think that's kind of funny, why not? Um, we've got this ISBN number here that we used earlier. Let's go ahead and bring this over top and I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit just because I want this to be the exact same width again as our type. There we go. Hit V and then the number zero to bring it back to 100%. Pink is the new pink. I can see this selling a lot of copies. Just to, just saying. <laughs> All right, if I want them to both be, I think they can both be a little bit smaller. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and shift click those layers and make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And then, you know what we're going to do just on the very end, I want to, I kind of want to use this black, uh, this black bars over here. So I'm going to hit command J on the new. Let's bring that right over here and we're going to call this Photoshop. You know what? I'm going to click over here in paragraph and we're going to right align this. So that way if I go ahead and if I scale something or if I if I need to copy it, it's going to start typing from the right side. So just like in Microsoft Word or whatever, you've got center align, left align and right align. All right, we're going to type in Photoshop. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take the bold off of that. I'm going to hit Command J and we're going to bring this down. Double click on that and call this Tutorials. <laughs> All right, we'll bring those two up. Photoshop Tutorials and duplicate that. And we'll call this one Flirt. There we go. And then we can shift click the three of those and move them around as well. Very, very cool. All right, let's bring tutorials down slightly. So I'm kind of just playing around here. I'm using what my image already has in it, like the black background, thing like that, to actually display what we want in the image. And you'll see like with magazine ads, they do that stuff all the time. Like they're, you know, they're changing this transition between the background and the subject. So they're using, you know, these borders and things like that. And then they're using colors that are usually in the images as well. Like we've got really light skin on our face. We're using light colors here as well. So we're basically using the same ideas here to create our magazine cover and uh, just like they did with the Gwen Stefani. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at our before and our after. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Go out and take a picture of your dog and stick it as a magazine cover or your friend. You could use a person too. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do it by clicking on your screen right now. And if you have an idea for an episode, just like Nefer Romero said, hey, I want to learn how to create a V magazine cover, 
just leave it in a comment down below. That's how we get our ideas for episodes and we'll make your idea into an episode. And if you have anyone in your life who loves Photoshop but they wanna get better at it, make sure to suggest flurn.com by hitting that share button and share it with your buds. Thanks so much guys and I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone. Magazine cover. Bang, bang, biggie. With your buds. Yo, buds. I just gotta share this video with you. You're my buds. My buds. Buds. Where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun!